Thank you so much to all the supporters that make this channel possible. What's up citizens, this is Subliminal here and today we'll be discussing my opinions on how combat ships rank for PvE bounty hunting. These are my opinions and sometimes extremely subjective. Please read this disclaimer before commenting. The server performance in 317 has drastically raised frame rates for users across the board. And little known fact, this same performance boost is also responsible for the increased PvE bounty hunting difficulty. To keep it simple, in previous patches, the server performance was so bad that an NPC had a hard time hitting you, and now that the servers are running like a top, when an NPC fires at you, especially at close range, they will probably hit you, meaning rushing into a trio of hurricanes is a death sentence. In addition to this change, distortion weapons are nowhere near as effective as shutting down ships as they were in 316. These are two important factors for the changes made to my ship rankings. This was recorded during my live stream on Twitch, but it was produced for the sole purpose of this video. This month's ship giveaway is the Miss Call A, link in the description. Without further ado, let's get to it. I'm going to give you my opinions on how combat ships rank for PvE in Alpha 317, and we're starting right now. All right, before I get started, uh, one thing I want to acknowledge is that bounties have changed in 317 because the servers are performing better than NPCs are on a whole nother level. If you haven't played in this patch, please don't make any comments below. That's number one. Number two, this is a ranking guide on VHRT and ERT bounties. And this is a ranking guide on whether or not I think you should purchase this ship, whether it be with Alpha UC or real money to for that purpose. That's what this is about. All right, so let's start off with some ships that I really don't recommend. The 100i is a terrible starter ship. It's a terrible starter ship for doing VHRT and ERT bounties. I understand that there's a lot of people that can do it, but it's not one that anybody should purchase for the purpose of doing this. Same with the Pisces. Great snub, but it's a terrible ship for doing these bounties. We've got some more snubs here. Let me bring them over. We've got the P72, P52. Honestly, a great ship. This ship can, can fight against a lot of cool ships, but guess what? It can't quantum travel from point A to point B, so it's trash. It, it, it's, it's just trash. This is an arena Commander, we're talking about doing VHRT missions. There is no reason why you should get out of your Connie to get in this ship to fight another ship. All right. I, I, I understand in PV, you could PVP people and do all your little tricks. That's not what we're talking about here. Um, this, this ship, the RSI Mantis is a great ship with a group for doing pirating. Not good for, for VHRT bounties. Then we've got the M50. Same, pretty much the same thing as the, as the Merlin, but I would say that it's a little bit better. No reason to use these in these type of missions. Same with the Razor. They're racing ships. Sure. Good Good pilots can do crazy things, but it's irrelevant for what we're talking about here. The Cuddy Steel. If you have like 20 friends and you guys all want to die together, you guys want to martyr yourselves for the cause, get into a Cuddy Steel. It's great for that, but it's terrible at these missions. It's it's just paper and it's slow. Uh, it's just a sitting duck. I'm punishing all the Cuddies this patch, man, because these these hurricanes are they're dangerous. And the, you're, you're in this ship, you're a sitting duck. All right. Same with the, the, the Cuddy Blue, Cuddy Black. Same deal. The Valkyrie. You know what? The Valkyrie is not a ship you should buy to do these bounties. F tier, F tier. Let's just get that just straightforward there. F tier. You should not buy that ship to do bounties. It's terrible solo. And there's you. if you want to put other people in a ship, there's much better ships to buy. One of my least favorite ships here, the beginning of this video is going to be very negative, um, is the, Gladi the Gladiator. I absolutely hate this ship. They need to slave that top turret. It's only worth a damn if you have somebody else in it and you don't need it for these missions. The size five torpedoes are nothing great. The Tana, trash. I'm keeping it here at D tier. The ship is slow. It's got a huge broadside on the side. It's, it's terrible. I'm sorry. I know that the Tana gang is strong out there. The Tana cult. I'm sorry, Tana Cult is strong out there. You guys need to calm down, all right, and try out another ship, okay? Because that one is trash. It's a good starter ship, I guess, if you're if you're not really focused on combat, but when you're talking about buying this ship for the purpose of doing a, a VHRT bounty, trash. Saber Raven. Saber Raven, I'm going C tier. It's got an EMP. It's only got two weapons. Not going to be the same class as the, the regular Saber, because the EMP, I don't know if it's anything great right now. You still can shut down ships, but the Karatue. Karatue was a really cool ship. One of the coolest ships in the game um, with the cool factor, but unfortunately, stealth components no longer reduce your stealth signature, so you can't get this thing to be stealthy enough to be worth a damn. But it's very fast, very nimble. It's a really cool ship. If we could get stealth back, then there might be a reason to use it, and it'll be pretty much impossible to hit this thing with a missile. It'll disappear because it's so far away, or it'll be too close for you to throw a missile at him. The base freelancer, same thing. Not a ship you should buy for doing these missions. I'm actually going to put this down here. 
Uh, the Talon Shrike, I'm gonna put this at C tier as well. Not a ship I recommend, but you can you can do it, but it's just not something that I recommend. 325A, same thing. It's got a size four weapon under the nose um, and two size three under the wings, but it's very fragile. These wings are fragile, and I'm pretty sure if you lose them, you lose your weapons, and the atmospheric flight isn't even that good. The, the Avenger Titan, you know, I love this ship last patch, but its atmospheric flight capabilities is a problem and it makes you a sitting duck when you're doing high level bounties. So I don't really recommend it as much anymore. It's a good ship to use if this is the only thing you got to make money to buy a better ship. But I'm going to put this put this here. As for the Warlock, though, I will put that in B tier because you can utilize that EMP to shut down some ships once the shields are down. All right. The Mustang Alpha, so I'm going to put this at the same level as it's kind of hard putting this at the same level as the Titan. The, the Titan is it, one could argue it could be B tier. I'm going to put the Alpha and the and the the Aurora. These are actually better ships than people think. I think I don't think they're very fragile at all, to be honest. This is the Delta and the Aurora LN. Let me make sure you guys understand that. These are not the starter ships. I'm sorry for even saying that. These are not the starter ships. These are the military or the, the combat variants of those ships. Not the same thing. These have four size one weapons on them. I think the, the Alpha has like two size twos and two size ones. It's it's pretty ridiculous. Definitely possible for somebody to do VHRTs in this. I'm going to keep the, the 300i uh, same deal, uh, same, same level, but I just don't think the extra weapon does anything to make this a higher tier freelancer miss same tier it just doesn't have enough guns the fire it's it's a gunship but it's really not i mean the only thing that has going for it the freelancer miss is the torpedoes that's really it the m2 no go you can do bounties with it but i don't know why you'd want to do them uh, to be honest you're not going to buy that ship to do bounties then i'm also people are probably not going to like this at all the hornet is back a b tier it's i almost put it in c tier i almost did it I almost did it. It's so slow. It's It's got a lot of firepower. Don't get me wrong, but it's very slow. These new NPCs will eat you up. You really got to be a good pilot to take advantage of this. And I, I just I just don't I don't recommend it. It's so slow. It's turning in atmosphere is a problem. It's a problem. Buccaneer, same way, same way. Buccaneer, back of B tier, back of B tier. The Prowler, I'll put that at the, at the beginning of B. I think that's good. The Prowler has a lot of firepower. It's slow, not very maneuverable at all, but you just got to play to that advantage. Just sit back straight and let everything come to you. The Saber, same deal. Saber is a good ship. I love it in theory, but it's just not, I guess, nimble enough. And the top broadside is pretty bad. So top of B tier, I would say. The Blade, B tier. The Blade is B tier. I wish that you could change the weapons on this and put your own cannons on it. I really do. The base Talon is fragile. If you lose a wing, you're screwed. Its atmospheric flight capabilities are really good. And the atmospheric uh, combat is kind of almost unavoidable. At the moment, you can kind of minimize your amount of atmospheric bounties you get by going to Crusader. But next up, we're going to do Hawk. Hawk, fragile. Sorry. It's a good ship in the right hands. It's probably a lot, probably much better for PvP. But in these PvE bounties, not the best ship you can use. It really isn't. The A2 is really honestly no different than the M2, unless you're going to multi-crew it. If you're going to multi-crew the A2, it's kind of, it's A tier. Let's get that straight. I know I haven't talked about multi-crew with any of these other ships. I'm mentioning it now. If you multi-crew this ship, it's a good ship. If you multi-crew the Hammerhead, it's a good ship. These have a lot of turrets, a lot of big turrets, and they can eat up a lot of stuff. If you want to group up together to do these type of missions, I don't really recommend it. If you're solo, obviously the Hammerhead is would, wouldn't even be on this list and the A2 would be lower. It'd be down here with the M2. But if you are looking to multi-crew, these are great ships. Same with the Redeemer. Even with the Redeemer's turret nerf, for the purpose of doing um, PVE bounties, it's still S tier. S tier all the way. Oh, let's do the Vanguards now. Another thing that I didn't mention in the beginning, but I'll probably put it in the disclaimer in the beginning, like written in, is the fact that distortion weapons are no longer working like they used to in the last patch. So the Vanguard series cannot be S tier anymore. Uh, it cannot complete an ERT solo easily, quickly enough that it's worth it to do an ERT versus chaining VHRTs. This is the Vanguard Hoplite. I'm gonna put the Hoplite and the Warden. I'm gonna put the Vanguards at S tier, but only for VHRTs, only for VHRTs. That's very important. That is the reason why this is going there. I do not recommend doing these for ERTs. It is not worth the time and, and the risk of dying. The Glaive is gonna be A tier. Dude, the Glaive slaps. So it's got two size five uh, weapons on each wing. I don't care about the little weapons in the middle. You can turn those off, actually. 
actually you'll get more capacitor ammo for the winged weapons the the glaive slaps it's slow not very fragile or not very agile but if you kind of like back strafe let stuff come to you and play to your advantages it's a good ship same with the scythe they both have the two size five weapons i used to be under the impression there was only one size five weapon on that big wing that's not the case even that little stub wing has it's they got the same weapons so it's dope all right let's get into some ships here that that i really like gladius vhrt's is great it's a fast nimble ship it's in this new patch is going to require more skill than ever but i still think in the right hands it's an s tier ship same with the arrow very hard to hit these ships great ships i love the gladius and arrow and all that but they're not going to be able to excel at, at erts obviously i don't think that's really even possible anymore let's bring in one of my favorite ships this patch for just like because it's an underdog the banu defender banu defender last patch with two distortions on it could shut down a hammerhead faster than than most ships you put two sucker punches on it could shut it down really quick you can't do that anymore i will just go full laser cannons the ship handles an atmosphere like no other it's ridiculous how well this ship handles an atmosphere it might be broken like they might have somebody might have not put a value in it's it, it doesn't make sense but don't tell cig that all right banner defender great ship better best medium fighter if that, i consider it a medium fighter okay now we're gonna get into like god tier s tier here all right the hurricane here with the with the redeemer S tier, if you have a second pilot, of course, solo, it's it's really not good. It's really not something you should buy for doing these. Let's go for the ions, A tier. Sorry, I'm sorry for everybody, all these owners. They'll, they'll fix it, guys, they'll fix it. Starfighters, just take too long to take out a hammerhead and it's risky, it, not everybody's gonna be able to do it. I, I can't even believe it, that these ships that I'm about to put in here with, with guns, not even talking about throwing missiles or torps, are better taking out hammerheads than the two dedicated, you know, capital ship takedown ships. The aiming on these is ridiculous ridiculously terrible in atmosphere. You get an unexpected torque imbalance, which is very noticeable, like w at the drop of a hat. I'm sorry, in order to, to for this to be A tier, you've got to be a pretty decent pilot and follow a strat that I might put in another video for taking on a hammerhead. You basically uh, sit and back strafe, let the hammerhead come to you. You you may have to take out the ads. The ads are gonna be a problem. They're gonna be a problem. It's gonna take too much time. Anyway, I would maybe chain solo ERTs with these. Don't do groups. Do just a solo ERT and figure out a good strat if you need to use it, if you have to, all right? But it's not something I'd go out and buy for sure if you wanna do it. All right, here we go. God tier, actually, let's take these off, put them at the end, the Connie. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I, I don't know what to say, like, like, I hate this ship. It's ugly. It's so ugly. Um, the struts are terrible, but you can do an ERT rel with relative ease. Same way I said before, except it's a little bit more forgiving. You sit there, let the hammerhead come at you, and you just start strafing up, down, left, right. Once you know it gets within range, to start shooting you, and you stay at a, like an 1800 to 2200 meter distance, and you fire the cannons. You, your pip might not actually open up because you might not technically be within range, I think for the size four weapons, but you just shoot at it anyway, you'll eventually take it down, and it's it's relatively quick. I could probably do it in less than, less than two minutes every time, hands down. Same same with the 600i. God tier, S tier ship, same strat. Sit there, let it come to you, play at your ship's strength. And then of course, I'm gonna be honest, people have been talking about how, um, no, no, the best ship for, for doing these, these ERT bounties is just to throw a torp at it. And I've been arguing for a long time that that is not accurate. In previous patches, you could take these, you could take out a hammerhead in less than a minute in, in a lot of these ships that are up here at the top, right? The Vanguards and the, the Connie 600 i and all that. However, the risk now with these bounties working at this higher tick rate, I would say that if you like throwing those torps, go ahead and do it. Because to be honest, I don't know how many of these hammerheads I can take out before I actually need to repair these ships. I bet the Retaliator could probably take out ERTs faster because it could kill, you know, like a solo ERT, it could kill it. Six of them, six hammerheads done without having to rearm. Yet I, I challenge someone to consistently take out six hammerheads, especially in a buggy game and not have to repair the Andromeda. So that that's where I'm putting these. So again, to recap and look, I'm let me clarify with these two ships. I'm not talking about if you put people in the turrets, I'm talking about solo. You don't need anybody else in these ships. If you put other people in these ships, oh dude, you're going to slaughter. It's going to be ridiculous. I'm talking solo, solo and any Connie. It doesn't, it could be the Taurus. It doesn't matter. They all fly the same. That's all that really matters for this. And they all have the same weapons. These are great for if you just want to sit and throw torps, you're a damn dirty missile throwing ape. You know you are, you little fucks. And oh, Bandy Defender is so, it's so smooth. I challenge it. Get a Bandy Defender, try it out. VHRT, get a Bandy Defender. Aero Gladius, always good ships. The Vanguards are still great ships, but again, you can't do the ERTs with them. So they're great for chaining the VHRTs. I'm sorry, you can do ERTs. People are going to quote me on that and tell me, oh, but I can do it. Okay. I mean, you can't do it efficiently enough to make it worth grinding them for Alpha UEC.
This month's ship giveaway is the missed call A, LTI, and game package. There are 10 ways to enter, each giving you more points and a greater chance to win. To enter, just visit subliminal.gg giveaway. Pro tip, the redeemed Twitch channel point rewards can be done once every live stream. If you enjoy my channel, there are so many ways to support it, ranging from free options like Prime gaming subscriptions and sending out for UEC in the verse, sub club subscriptions, merch, to more generous forms of support. Head over to subliminal.gg to learn how. Your support in all forms makes this channel possible. Even your viewership, liking, and subscribing goes a long way. Until next time, citizens, I'll see you in the verse.